Now let's see a vulnerability in Samsung processors, Secure Boot. So in Samsung Phones's Exynos's application processors Secure Boot Flow, so Samsung Phones Secure Boot Flow on the application processor, the firmware supports what's called Odin mode. And the idea here is that it allows customers to put custom firmware and software onto the device at the expense of blowing a fuse that tells Samsung that you went into Odin mode at some point, you put something custom and unsupported on it, and therefore you have voided your warranty on the phone so you will no longer be eligible for repairs. So the idea is that if the normal secure boot flowed, starts up the processor and works its way towards the kernel, the checking the boot mode will look for whether or not the volume down and power button is set, and then it will vector over into Odin mode if so. So the whole point of Odin mode is to download new software onto the device, and it's done via USB, which means this Odin mode firmware needs to have USB processing to pull down new firmware. Now, unfortunately, the available pseudocode provided with the research is not sufficient for me to let you loose and have you try to go find the flaw yourself. So I just got to tell you what the flaw is, and it turns out that it is an insanity check. So we've got a comparison of an argument that is attacker controlled against a number, 1E000, and when this person was decompiling this, presumably with hex rays, they, you know, moused over to show that the assembly that this pseudocode was decompiled back from is doing a signed comparison at this point. So this value here, attacker controlled value, will be treated as a signed number when it's checking if it's bigger than this. Now, the crux of this right here is what they actually care about here is no matter what, you're going to be leading to a USB receive until. But what they care about is where the, uh, where the destination is that data is being copied to. So up here, you have the destination defaulted to C and seven zeros. But if you get in here and if this arg1 is treated as greater than this value, then instead this V12 will be set to B and seven zeros instead of C and seven zeros. So for purposes of this attack, the attacker will want the value of C and seven zeros because it's going to be closer to the code they want to overwrite. So they don't want to get in here. And thus the ultimate problem is that if a very large value is sent and it is treated as a signed comparison, then a large value will be treated as a small negative value, which means it will not get into this code. And that's what the attacker wants. They want to not use B and seven zeros. They want to use the C and seven zeros. So it'll skip over that and then it'll go elsewhere. Now, we don't know exactly from the pseudocode where the USB receive until is. You know, it might be there. I think it's probably there. Could be somewhere after the code that's actually shown here. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough information based on this. Again, this is why I didn't let you loose on this for yourself. Now, it turns out when the researcher whose work we're following thus far submitted their vulnerability to Samsung, Samsung said, well, sorry, someone else has already found this vulnerability. So it turns out someone else doing parallel research on a Samsung S10 device had already submitted the vulnerability because the exact same sort of insanity check exists in the S10 Odin code. So this is decompiled with a different decompiler, Ghidra, instead of uh, Ida and hex rays like the previous one. But, you know, it's the same sort of vulnerability. You can see 1E000, it's an integer, it's a signed integer comparison. And that's going to lead to different control flows based on what the attacker passes in. Now, the original researcher who was doing this S10 research and submitted it to Samsung, you know, they said, like, I can see there's a vulnerability here, I just don't know fully how to exploit it. So they submitted it without a full exploit, unlike the one that was done on the S8. And the lack of capacity to exploit it had to do with the locations that were used when things were copied. So for instance, it could be 88000 instead, and that's much farther away than the C000, which is desirable for overflowing into the SBoot code. Now, you know, I haven't really looked into this uh, deeply, but, you know, just skimming the pseudocode, it looks to me like, you know, okay, well, the possible values are Odendine buff of 880000, you can see here it's setting it to the B000, like in the other S8 code. And then I don't know what's up with this name, but this name kind of implies to me that Odin Dine buff could be set to C000. So maybe if an attacker could reach this case, that would be you know useful. Anyways, I don't know, but the, the point is the, the other researcher who is doing the S8 stuff, whose work we're primarily following, he tried to look at the S10 as well, and you know he couldn't find a way to exploit it either. 
So the idea is back on that uh, S8 device, the attacker successfully passes a large value that hits that uh, signed comparison, that signed sanity check, and the signed sanity check lets them through. This value is being used as the destination where memory will be copied, and this value of C and seven zeros happens to be suspiciously close to this C9 and six zeros where the code for the secure boot is going to be running from. So if the attacker can overflow, you know, greater than nine and six zeros, then they will successfully start smashing that code. So again, the thing that the, you know, the unexploitable one, it was instead set to eight, eight and zero, zero, zeros, which you can see is quite a bit farther away from here. So the conditions of overflowing, you know, at least trying to compromise that as opposed to perhaps something else in the interim, uh, it would be a lot more difficult. So when it comes to the actual fix, what did Samsung do? Well, they added in this sanity check to make sure that the argument had to be less than one and seven zeros. Now that in and of itself probably doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough, right? Because if an attacker can choose right here, they only need nine and six zeros, not one and seven zeros in order to successfully overwrite and overflow into that. So in and of itself, that is probably not enough. And that's why later on in the code, there is also a check on the size right here that you can see now the decompiler is saying is an unsigned size. It's checking the size against two and six zeros. So a much smaller size is now constrained here. So no longer can an attacker copy a giant amount of data that is going to overflow from C and seven zeros all the way into the secure boot code. So the firefighter is giving us a thumbs up that we have successfully slaughtered the signed size. So now what does the attacker do? Well, the attacker looks at that patch and then they, you know, try to figure out what else they can do. And I love this picture because this is exactly what a vulnerability researcher should do when they're provided a patch by a company. They should sit and stare and say, what about other corner cases? What about other code? What's still possible? Did they truly fix the problem everywhere? So when he went back and looked at the code a little bit more in the context of the patch, he found this other completely different uh, type of command, this different opcode and subopcode that could be sent into the Odin code. And using this, the attacker could set essentially a packet size that would be used later. So attacker controlled argument comes in, that corrupts this value. That value is then subsequently used, you know, with some bit manipulation to create a 64-bit value. So keep in mind this 4B0, that's going to be used elsewhere. So attack controlled, blah, 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 4B0. Now he goes back and he looks at that USB receive until, which is the thing that was actually uh, causing the overflows. And now he's got a sanity checked size that's going in here. So it's not fully attack controlled. It's now a sassy size. And that's that right there. Now there's some alignment checks inside of this code. So it's basically going to take the sassy size and it's going to divide by that thing that he set elsewhere in that other completely different, you know, command handler. So this ending in 4B0 was an attacker controlled value. So it's doing size divided by some value of the attacker controls times the value of the attacker controls. And it's checking, is that equal to size? So essentially what this is doing is an alignment check. It's saying, you know, if X divided by Y times Y is equal to X, that means that X would have been a multiple of Y in the first place. So if the attacker sends in a size that is not a multiple of that other size that they set in the other handler, then instead it's gonna go down here. So now you've got attack controlled value, the same, sort of sent, uh, the same sort of alignment check right there, but it's gonna do the alignment and then it's going to add in the extra attacker controlled size. So that corrupts this and that's acid math, which is as bad as an acid bath. Now, you know, there is the opportunity potential for, you know, integer overflows and stuff here, but really we don't need an integer overflow. The key point is that this causes what was otherwise a sanity checked size, the sassy size, that the attacker couldn't set it above a certain size. Now, all of a sudden it's having some other attacker controlled size added to it. And now, you know, this is no longer as sassy as it once was. This is now a fully attacker controlled data potentially. So this is essentially an alignment uh, mechanism gone wrong. So again, back to this kind of code, you know, this is not the fixed version, obviously, but if we go back and we looked at that pseudocode, you know, the, the argument can be, you know, compared, there can be some sanity checks up at this level, but when you get down into the USB receive level, 
that's going to add in some attacker controlled value from elsewhere. So I'm obviously just reusing this initial pseudocode, not the, the code that I had the sanity check in because the sanity check code didn't show the USB receive buffer. So unfortunately, this other mechanism completely bypasses this sanity check that was supposed to stop overflows. And for that, the researcher got another CVE. And so what was Samsung's fix for that? Well, they added in a sanity check that says that argument can't be greater than all Fs. So that alignment mechanism now must be size constrained down to hopefully make it so that that can still allow for the alignment without causing an overflow, a buffer overflow later on. So the reality is there was actually even one more bug. And so, you know, I definitely recommend going and checking out the original video, the original research. Uh, the, the next vulnerability is not, you know, relevant to this uh, section. And, you know, technically neither was that last one with that uh, acid math that didn't necessarily need an injury overflow. But I just really wanted to show you the idea of researcher finds a vulnerability, gets a patch, patch back, and then re-examines whether or not the... Uh, the developers have successfully closed the vulnerability or whether they've just, you know, allowed the attacker to go somewhere else and utilize some other thing. So, you know, go check out this other thing because it's a very cool, you know, thinking outside of the code in front of you thing.